everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a floating frame for a canvas. I think that this is a very sleek and elegant way to frame a canvas. Um, I feel like it gives it a little something extra. So let's get started. You'll need a painting, wood, clamps, a miter box and saw, wood glue, nails, hammer, tape, sandpaper, paint or stain, screws, and a drill and hanging hardware. I chose nails and wire. Measure your painting. Mine is 10 by 10 and one and a half inches deep. You need two pieces of wood per side. We're gonna attach them together to become sort of like an L shape. Your wood needs to be as wide as the depth of your canvas. That would be one and a half inches for me. And then as thick as you'd like the frame to be. I got wood that was, I think, one fourth ish inch. And then as long as all four sides of your canvas, plus the size of the gap that you want between the canvas and the frame. I want about a one eighth inch or so gap, so I added one fourth inch to my 10 inch measurements. So for me, it's 10 and one fourth, plus 10 and one fourth, plus 10 and one fourth, plus 10 and one fourth times two. So that, again for me is like 82 inches total. But you need to account for the mitered angles and the thickness of the wood that you get, so make sure you add on a couple inches. I ended up being able to get four two foot sections of wood for my frame. So for me, my wood measurements are four two foot by two inch by one fourth inch. Yeah, you're seeing that right. I got wood that was marked as two inches wide, but my canvas is one and a half inch. Well, if you took a ruler to the wood that I got, you'd see that it's actually one and a half inches wide. For whatever reason, wood is always like half an inch or so smaller than what it's marked as. Something to do with the way that they mill it down or something, I don't know. But it's important to know when you're going and buying wood for projects especially when you need precise measurements, like for frames and stuff. Anyway, take two pieces of wood, apply wood glue along the bottom edge of one and the bottom face of the other, and then glue them together like so and clamp them up. Clean up any wood glue that oozes out. If you don't have enough clamps, you can temporarily clamp the wood together and nail them together, and then remove the clamps to use elsewhere. The nails end up working like clamps. They hold the wood together while the glue dries. This is what I had to do. The easiest way I found to do this was to glue up the wood at the edge of my work desk like so. I clamped it up and then proceeded to nail the pieces together. Let dry. Now to cut the wood. Note, when aligning your wood in the miter box to cut it, make sure that the taller side is facing up and the shorter side is on the bottom. This first cut that I made, I accidentally had it the wrong way and I ended up cutting it so that the side of the frame was going to be too short. This is actually supposed to be the bottom of the frame and I cut it wrong, so that sucked. But thankfully I realized this on the first cut and I was able to correct myself and I gave myself enough extra wood that it wasn't a problem. Anyway, make the first cut with the mitered angle going in like so. You want the tall side of the frame to be the widest part and then the bottom part of the frame to be the smallest part, if that makes sense. On this inside face, take your canvas measurement plus the extra that you want the gap to be and make a mark. So for me, it's a 10 inch canvas with 1 8 inch gaps. So I marked it at 10 and 1 4 inches. Then cut at that mark, again angling in like so. If you have enough wood to cut another side, then make sure to cut this mitered angle to kind of restart and then mark the measurement. You can use this piece to measure how big to cut the second piece. And if you have a square canvas like me, you can use it to cut the other two sides as well. Then you should have four pieces that look like this. I'm going to use tape to help hold the frame together as it dries. So first I laid the pieces down with tape at the ends, like so, lining up each piece of frame with the next until I got to the end. 
apply glue to all of the ends and assemble the frame. For me, with the taped edges, I just had to roll it up and then add one last piece of tape to the fourth corner. If you have one of those fancy corner band clamps, you can use that to hold the frame while it dries. I don't, but I find the tape works well enough. I ended up adding some more tape going across each corner just to make sure everything was nice and tight. Clean up any excess glue and then let it dry. Remove the clamps or tape or whatever you use to hold it together and then sand, sand, sand. Wipe the dust off and then finish the frame however you see fit. Initially, I stained this frame with a dark color, but I didn't do a good enough job cleaning off the wood glue and then sanding it off, so you can clearly see those spots after I stained it. I ended up going back and painting it off camera. Oh, and make sure you stain or paint the bottom face of this too, because part of it will be visible through the gap between the frame and the painting. Anyway, when that's all dry, flip it over and then drill at least one pilot hole on each side of the frame. You may want to fit the canvas in first to see where to drill the holes. Flip the frame back over and place your painting inside, aligning it so it has equal gaps on all sides. You can use some pieces of cardboard or cardstock or something to wedge in between the painting and the frame to keep the painting from shifting around. And then flip it over and screw the painting in. You can then attach whatever hanging hardware you want. I went with the nails and wire. And then just hang it up and admire your work. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, all of that good stuff. If you want to follow me on any of my social media, they'll be linked down below. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment down below, and I'll see you next week. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping me produce this video. If you like my videos and have learned something from them, please consider supporting me on Patreon to help me continue to make them. It's totally optional, I'll still be making videos either way, it just helps me be able to put out better stuff. A link will be down below, or you can just click up here in the corner.